there is a far larger risk from climate change than there is ever going to be from the bearded, scary terrorist that Americans are afraid of in their homes. It's perhaps best to think about it in terms of measurements of something that all Americans can relate to, which is 9-11. During 9-11, there's about 3,000 people that were killed. So if you take basically increments of 9-11 and you stretched out the amount of cumulative emissions just for military operations over the course of 20 years of war, you'd be approaching 100 9-11s worth of civilian death. Science Magazine, the U.S. military's footprint over an eight-year period of time during the War on Terror was about 593 million tons of carbon. If you did the division over that eight-year period of time, and that tonnage would then equate to roughly 130,000 deaths just from military emissions just over that one time span. buckets of emissions that need to be considered, not just operational emissions associated with flying aircraft, but in the full value chain associated with the military industrial complex, which also includes the operating uh, consumption and emissions of bases in 80 different countries around the world, the creation and R&D and manufacturing of equipment being used by the military, and then of course those day-to-day -day operations that we just talked about. person allocating resources, spending it on the military is not where you would put that money. There is a far larger risk from climate change than there is ever going to be from the bearded, scary terrorist that Americans are afraid of in their homes. There are many other things that are far more dangerous to Americans than foreign-born terrorists, but what is a real threat is climate change. It is an imperative that we as a world and global citizens reduce our climate impact. One of the largest emitters is the military, and therefore the next step is that we need transparency of military emissions, and those emissions need to be reduced. Mm -hmm.